I think that there was one song where it was called Long Way. Benny, it was um not it was it wasn't long, it was India. India. Benny and El Camino, and he said they they reach out to dat me and I'm reaching for my rocket. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, you talking about authentic dudes. Yeah. And it though they are musicians, that doesn't uh foreshadow the um environment that they was raised in first and foremost. But secondly, that doesn't overshadow the level of alertness that comes along with those those that environment. So, you know, you you at alert all the time. People approaching you that you don't know, you fall back on your your instincts from your environment, which is to hold on. Do I protect myself or you know, they forget that they they have fans, you know, they because they're not that far removed from the environment. You know? So let's be real. If you if they in Buffalo or you know they in Brooklyn they in Harlem, they in Philly, if they in Sao Paulo, if they in Germany, if they in Aspen, approach with caution. It don't matter. You know what I mean? Let somebody know you coming. Put your hand up. Hey, how you doing? I'm a fan. You know what I mean? If you ask for an autograph, ask for a selfie and approach slowly because this shit is real out here. Um, these, these, the, the, these are authentic individuals they are not uh make believe they are not um just props you know these people really live the lifestyle that they talk about in this music it, it may not be currently but they have lived through some very harsh things in life just as anybody else that might have grown up in these type of environments these are just poets that more or less tell the story but that don't don't get it twisted just because they got a, a talent and they can put words together don't think that they can't you know um handle their business and so uh, can you talk about how maybe those stints up the road may have informed West Side Gun style and his resolve and sharpened his steel? Because I think there's some, that's a methodology and, and, and magic. We never want to see nobody get incarcerated. It's, I mean, kind of like the worst thing that could happen to you is to, is to go to prison, to lose your freedom, to be away from your family, to have these wicked ass COs telling you when you could take a shit, when you could eat, when you can go to the shower. But something good came out of the, those prison stints. Can you talk about that? I mean, just, I think just like I was saying before, you know, like like when I was when we was talking about him going into these, uh, you know, places and meeting people, and they saying, you know, this this is not it, or this doesn't sell, or in his his level of confidence in the way that he doesn't really look at things as negative, and he he sees the the a way to use the things that somebody might consider as negative as a way to forward the the movement or the um, as fuel so to speak so if you if you ask him you know of course he would say no i didn't i don't i wish that i wouldn't have gone to prison but in the negative light of the prison that helped him sit down long enough to really get in those composition books and really write a full live like well thought plan so sitting down in one spot that long you know made it where he could get even more calculated and even more methodical about the way that he was gonna you know really tackle things this time when he comes at it because you know it, it's if those things in in life weren't losses, they're just lessons, you know. And we we I think we all know by now, West Side Gun to be the mastermind behind this explosion of Griselda. And we in the pre interview we talked about. I, I wanted to ask you about. Do you think that at some point West Side Gun will be respected and revered as a mogul on the level of a of a babyface of a L.A. Reed, rest in peace? 
of a Diddy, of a Dr. Dre. Do you see him being respected on that same level as some, some of our great mog moguls, Russell Simmons comes to mind? Uh, yeah, I do. I do see him being revered as a great. However, in indifferent to those people that you named, Westside Gun will be attached to more than just music. It would be Westside Gun attached to art, attached to um, business, and attached to just way more moves than just uh bringing uh musicians into the light he will be making artists famous as well as musicians as well as uh you know it might even be a, a school and then and y'all and y'all all got this um this freestyle background you know the, the the ciphers the battles and stuff like that and so i wanted to ask you i mean you did you 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 did battles before you you know you sharp as steel, taking it straight to dudes. When the first time you met Conway, he rose up on you like yo, I hear you can rap, and all of a sudden you battling this guy like it's the, it was in your blood like that. And of course, I used to spit back in the day, and I was a battle rapper. So the question is, do you think you could take me? I'm just playing. And do I take <laughs> do I take beats? No, do you think you could take me? Would you think you could go? <laughs> yeah, I go with you. No, I no, I, I don't do that. No. <laughs> I'm trying to make my my channel grow, and if I start freestyling, I'm about to lose yeah. everything I work for. <laughs> you you know one thing though that I can say, like since you brought up that from back in the days when we met, and you know with you know them approaching me and, and me rapping, he didn't rap. He didn't rap, bro. He did. He does not like to freestyle. Wow. Okay. So if you if you was if you see the rap. Early on, he he was freestyling. He was doing his best to to, to make the imp, the impact. But after so long, he brought Conway. Mm -hmm. So this is before Shady. I'm talking about. This is before Shady. This is just when he you know moving around with the Fly Guy Project and the Hitler Project. You know, and he was going on uh, Combat Jack and you know all these other um, shows, Green Lantern and stuff where you know people are known to come there and they know that the person gonna throw on the beat and they know that they got a fit you know after so long of that west side just was like okay all right bro you get him and i, I got a note here on this I'm, I'm, I could be... freestyles aren't uh chess it's just off the top of the dome which is you know like i said this guy is very calculated so he wants you to know what he's gonna say how he's gonna say it and what is what type of impact it's gonna make i'm gonna give cats a little secret real quick this is gonna take me maybe 10 seconds uh cats used to want to battle me all the time i figured it's hard to come off your dome with two three minutes worth of um you you didn't even think of the shit. and people think that the longer that they rap the hotter that they is in these ciphers if you ever get in a cypher and it's a real freestyle let the other dude just keep on rapping what i used to do was I would look at the dude and pick him apart while he was rapping. And all that time he yapping, I got three, four lines cocked and loaded for him, right? So then as soon as he get done, then I unload this funny shit about him right in his face. Maybe three lines in, the whole crowd go, ooh, battle over. That's how you win fucking battles. I'm just putting that ooh, out there. You know, and, and I think that I, I'm a goofy guy. Like I got a good, I'm a silly guy. So um, growing up, you know, we, where I'm from, you know, it's like a sport to rag on people and like, you know, roast people, so to speak. And I was always the champ. Like I was always the guy that they would come get when, you know, nobody could top somebody and then they would bring me and then, you know, I have everybody cracking up laughing at the guy or whatever. So oh, yeah, I think that I was good at battle rapping because I was good at roasting. And oh, it, yeah. it ain't about it ain't about how many little ass lines you can fit in and say all this crazy stuff because those would be considered jabs. Mm, Where's yeah. the power punches? Yeah. You, if you hit somebody with three real good power punches, it, it's going to overshadow all that. Now, um, I'm, I'm a fan of it so-so. So, 
I, I like songs more than I like just bars. Like I like whole concepts with a bridge and a hook. And, you know, I like songs more so than I like just threatening raps, you know, like, cause that's really what battle rap be. All the people that's great, all of the people that they say is like, oh my God, they killed it. Really all that they did was say what they was going to do to the dude or say what, what type of pistol they had or what the pistol was going to do or we done heard it a zillion times. So what what's new? But at the same time, I, I'm not knocking them. If that's what's winning and that's what's making it um, keep that culture moving forward, I'm I'm all for it. I, I, I want it to rock. I want people to be out here, you know, doing their thing. I'm going to say what I feel because that's what I do with this platform. This new freestyle shit that these cats do in these battles, I'm not with it. You can't be in my motherfucking face like that. Do not ex okay. invade my personal okay, motherfucking okay, space. Okay. At, least, at least I know I'm not tripping then. No, I don't play like that. I do not play okay. like nigga. Don't say whatever you want to say as long as it ain't about my mama or my kid. Cool. But don't none of that shit that you saying about me, you're not going to do that shit right here. Keep that shit over here. You're not spitting in my face. We're not bumping chest. You get inside a, a, my strike zone, I'm striking. Let's just keep it real. Exactly. You gonna you if, if you if you were in so so much of my personal space, you I might put you out of my personal yeah, space. Yeah, I don't play like that. Yeah. Fuck that. I don't it's know what play. they be doing out there with all this. I'm in niggas' faces and right. It's I'm, just a, it's it's you know, we consumers of drama. So the 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 further it is into the dramatic side of things, the more we'll consume it. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So um so Conway. On the song half of it. Such a fucking amazing song. The, the what, what 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 album is it? I don't I don't know what the album is. This is um lately I've been so stressed out, nigga. You don't even know the half of it. My partner just finished oh, 10 oh, years oh, of his oh, prison. Oh, oh, that's uh I heard it unreleased, so I okay. don't know what it's on. But Ooh. I know the song you're talking about. It's so I, then maybe you didn't hear the end of it because I I watched it on um Vivo Live session. And at the end, he does a, a talk out where he says, um, look what y'all made me. Look what I've become. Yes. And I broke down on my channel one day. I think I did a reaction to that song. And I said, it just caught me. He's talking to the people that shot him. Does that sound like Conway to you? It does, to me, it sounded like he was like, look what y'all y'all shot me. But I even became better. And I still made it. And I'm, and I'm out here like this. He, it seemed like he was talking to the shooters. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would say that Con Conway is more resilient than the rest of the guys in the group. I would say that Conway could take something bad. Conway is the one that could get up and keep fighting from it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. It, amazing story Conway is and I love the way he referenced what happened to him in one of his freestyle he said something he got a freestyle LA Leakers freestyle LA Leakers freestyle he went fucking bonkers and I think he said you know not not bad for a guy that was shot in his head and um left dead or he said something about I still became the best rapper alive on my deathbed like oh yeah 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 you can't stop him. He a machine. Yeah. It's the yeah. reason why his name is has evolved into the machine. Yeah. You know? It's is he it's like he takes the pain and then he he take it in and then wrap it up a way that, that, that just is undeniable when he deliver it back out. You know, it's like man, I, I've all I've Man, I love Conway. Yeah, and you dummies that show up in my in my comment section talking about they talk about drug drugs and guns and they don't ever talk about nothing else. Y'all y'all niggas is fronting cause y'all act like y'all didn't hear a song like uh Dead Out or Five to Fifty or these uh, or these other emotional songs. I forget the song the the one real emotional shit that, that's been out for a minute now. Uh is it on Chef Dreads? where he get real yeah. emotional on that. He got another emotional yeah. shit on the new album. They go real deep on like the story. And they also is telling you, so quit lying on these dudes in my comment section. Quit spreading this false yeah. narrative because they talk about where they come from. Yeah, they might glorify 
you know, shooting it up or whatever like that. But Benny is, especially Benny, is always giving you that other side of the story, like why you shouldn't go down that route. You know what I mean? And these people is, um, and we talk about West Side and we talk about Conway, especially, I don't know Benny's children's situation, but these are great fathers. You, t- you see, oh, yeah. guys, you see them all talking all about them. their kids and taking care of their kids all the time. West Side is a, his thing is a whole family operation, a whole family. Baby mama that he not with no more, she, she back involved with the, with the business. You know what I mean? So these are just the stand-up dudes, and they're not just giving you reckless shit. They're not telling the kids to go out there and fucking shoot. You know what I mean? We, we come from that environment. We come from the hood, so we know what it's like already. So they make it a little bit entertaining, but they're telling you how not to really be involved in that. And then if you study their moves, you learn so much more by just studying what they do rather than listening to what the fuck they say. Look what the fuck they did. You talk about a guy in Conway, I mean, excuse me, West Side Gun. You heard my man, Ron Ski, Ronald Reagan tell the story. This guy is is in Buffalo. He's in ATL. He's sticking to his guns. No pun intended. He's not switching up his style. Uh, Where half of y'all niggas that's watching me right now gave up. I did. I stopped rapping. I, I, I probably wasn't good enough. But here's Fly Guy. He said, ain't no way I'm not good enough. And it might have took him 15 fucking years to realize the vision and I know we talked about in the, in, in the pre-interview because you said it gets frustrating sometimes to see people like me fan the fuck out when you've been listening to this shit for 20 years. Yeah. And it's like he's the epitome of sticking to your guns. He's the epitome of uh, if you feel like you won't fail, then you won't fail. It's the, he's the epitome of if you believe then you can do it. Just don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and really mean it. Mm-hmm. Don't just say it because it sounds good. Really mean I'm gonna make it. Yeah. Stick to it. You know? Did you did they talk to you before they did that appearance on Jimmy Fallon? I mean, what was that moment like before they went on Jimmy Fallon? You got any background on that? Um well they was I think Westside was out here. We were just kicking it. Cause you're in LA right now. Yeah, yeah. So um, he was making music. They had a show. Uh, what's the name of the brand? Undefeated. Have you heard of a brand called Undefeated? Yeah. So Undefeated released a Nike Air Max, a collaboration mm-hmm. with Nike Air Max, and they came to do a show for that release. So. Undefeated and Nike had a party. Westside Gun, Conway, and Benny came and performed at that party. So um, when he came that day, he just was. We was talking about the uh, the video edits from Dr. Birds. So they had just shot Dr. Birds, and we, me and him, was just going back and forth for talking about like you know what he didn't like and what he did like and. You know, I'm telling them, bro, you can't talk to these people like that. Like, these are the great. Like, you can't. You know, Hype you Williams? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can, huh? You know, he didn't like yeah. some stuff that Hype Williams did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me what he didn't like that Hype did? Like, it just was like some of the cuts and some. Like, he, basically, this, the way that it looked er, before the, is not the way that it looked right now. Well, thank you, West Side, because the video is the bomb. Right, so basically they had did whatever they wanted to do. West Side being West Side, I don't like this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what is you like? <laughs> and then he talking to him on the phone, like, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. So to the point where the only way to fix the stuff that he wanted wrong was to do a whole new video, almost like basically. That's like somebody saying, man, I, I, I can't stand your shoes, but I like the lace. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I'm like, bro, you can't talk to these people like that. He's like, he, he said, he do the same thing, man. Man, I don't care. I, I, I want it how I want it. If I'm paying for it, it's going to be how I want it. So, you know, that's when the the video came out and then the video after the video came out that's when they went to Jimmy Fallon to perform the song from the video 
So he didn't say nothing to me about Jimmy Fallon or the, the hopes of Jimmy Fallon at that point. We were just talking about, uh, you know, his dislike for uh, the way that it visually looked. He wanted it to look a certain way. And he's always like that. If he wanted to look how he wanted to look, regardless of if you Robert De Niro or whoever you is, he's going to tell you his own. And that's just how it goes. I mean, because that Fallon. I'm proud of him. I was, I was happy for the Jimmy Fallon thing. I was happy that he, you know, they got to be on a national stage and, you know, people that have no clue what these guys are talking about can, you know, now tap into what these guys are talking about. You know, it's real street music. Hey, that was a big, big moment. I remember because I don't really watch Fallon all that much. Um, I'm more on Colbert. But. I uh, remember when they was like, oh, uh, Griselda. And I said, I looked at my girl like, Griselda about to be on Jimmy Fallon tonight? And then when they came out, of course, this is West Side Guns Vision. You could tell if you know anything about Griselda. When you see them come on stage, this ain't y'all just come out here, go to microphones. It was a whole thing happening. And he came out with the coat on. And them niggas, I'm surprised the studio audience didn't get the fuck up and leave. Like, run the fuck out of there. Because if, you, if you're not used to that type of energy, that shit was crazy when they came on. And this coat was so big. And these niggas got on like, oh, man, such a performance. Yeah, but that was, I, I think that was a big moment for the culture. when it's not, these, To me, these other cornball niggas that got these little uh, Uzi and Yachty got on there, whatever. And that's not, that's not a big moment. That's just a machine. Who was just feeding you propaganda, feeding you more propaganda. When 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 Griselda got to Jimmy Fallon, you saw the streets, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come in there and handle their business and and shout to Jimmy Fallon for for, give, for being astute enough to give these guys that look. Now the rest of y'all need to, to get these guys on your platform. Y'all motherfuckers need to have them on um Good Morning America so we can so Wes can talk directly to Gail. Shout out to Jimmy Fallon. I appreciate you, you know, looking out for my friends, man. That was dope. Uh, you know, they don't really get into politics much. You might, you might not hear them, you know, speak about, you know, they yeah. their, uh, you know, attachment to any uh, party or any affiliations or anything like that. Um, and I, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, money is money. You know, and it's like. Real talk, but on on the on the flip side, Conway is has really been on the front lines of a lot of major issues lately. Right, um, right, and late like lately, like he was he was um, made it for for the the George, you know, some bars about George Floyd, and you know, um, he put that out, and I was I was surprised, I was definitely surprised that you know um, he was willing to publicly say it and then release it not just play it on the live. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was dope. I, and that I, ain't I, that ain't all he's done. Cause I follow Conway and I know the, the first responder nurses that's dealing with these sick patients that's getting sick and dying from um COVID nineteen. He mm -hmm. went over to the hospital, I believe in Buffalo and oh, yeah. them oh, all yeah. for the whole day. Oh yeah. He did that. And there was a young oh, girl yeah. and, and and, and Westside, Westside and Conway and Benny all are like social um, warriors activists for their community. Yeah, so their community, the the community at which they uh, come from, the community at which they you know grew up. You know, they've always given back. Even when, like I said, back in the days when Benny was just you know just a hardcore spitter, you know, um, and he had a, a mixtape called American Dope Boy. Mm. You know, he changed it the way that it presented to people as American D boy, and then he went to schools and talked to elementary school kids about you know a, what a D boy is, and a D boy doesn't have to be just drugs. You know, it could be you know this and that, and you know gave him a, other outlets, a way a way of, of looking at what he was doing. Dave always cared about people that's going through stuff the way that they went through stuff. And hopefully they can, you know, do something that's looked at as a shining example for the people in their personal community. It's not just taken, right? It's like to, to, to whom much is given, much is required. And they, they showing you that they care and they giving back. I know that at Conway, another one of his uh, Instagram stories I saw, 
a, a girl I think was having a problem. I forget what the problem was, but she may have also been dealing with Bell's palsy. And oh, I think yeah, he, yeah. he heard her story and he pulled up on her. I think she was yeah. having a, a bake sale or a lemonade or something. And I think he yeah. came and bought her out, dropped stacks on her. And I mean, oh, the yeah. look on that girl's face, the, that, that Conway came to her crib. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. um, it, was, I, it almost made me shed a tear because, you know, this man is busy. You know, this man got, yeah. got work to do. He's on his way to, to climbing. And, we, and, and your business and their business, you know, every moment is precious. But he took uh, time out of his day to go uh, make that, that, that young girl's day. And uh, those type yeah. of things is very important. So when people, again, you know, we certain people on certain networks may may catch wind of Griselda and want to put them in a particular box that they violent and they're not doing nothing for the community. Listen, we don't say that kind of shit when when John Wayne is riding horses and shooting down the Indians or Al Pacino is Scarface or, you know, when somebody make a song, I, I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. We, we don't put that same kind of scrutiny on these fucking people. So let these people have their art, but then appreciate who they are as human beings. Number one, ain't a one of them dumb. You a very intelligent right. brother. I mean, the people can see that when they when they listen to yeah. you talk. And and every the top three members of Griselda are highly intelligent individuals. There ain't no dummies in that camp. Oh. Um, and so it's just it's, it's more than just about the rap. And you you've been so gracious with your time, and and I really do appreciate it because I think uh, of course this story is an important one to be told to the culture, and um. I know that I asked a question that had to do with uh, West Side Gun and art. He's real big on art. What is the likelihood that at some point we will see West Side Gun hosting his own show in one of these fancy galleries, paintings hanging on the wall? What's the likelihood? I would say it's 100% likely. But instead of it instead of like your statement saying at one of these high-end galleries it would be his gallery wow okay yes you'll see it but it just won't be at somewhere just some old random spot i would imagine it, it it's going to be either in miami during the time of the art basil thing that they have there every year or it's going to be somewhere out here in california maybe los angeles um you know just dedicated to art and the people who he is a fan of, the artists that he is a fan of. If if anybody could attempt anything, it's, it ain't nothing new under the sun. Right. You know, it's just the way that that my friend moves is it's so calculated that it's gonna just it, it'll have the impact. It's gonna have the impact. It's gonna make the the splash, no yeah. matter what. And I know he, he obviously a very artistic guy. Is he starting to move in these circles with these uh, fashion week cats? You know what I mean? These these high uh, level names, these designers, and people like movers and shakers in the, in the fashion and, and art industry. Is he rubbing shoulders with these people yeah, right now? You know, um, he's very he he talk he's basically connected with the movers and shakers of all street fashion. So you mm -hmm. talking about Dan C which is a well-known name in the streetwear culture right now. I've heard that name. About Virgil, um, who's attached to Louis Vuitton and, you know, has his own imprint off-white. Um, you know, he's connected with those guys on a, on a first-name basis mm. just through his level of um, understanding fashion, understanding, mm. you know, um, what moves and what doesn't move, what, uh, people will like and what people don't like, you know, I, I could go back again and say, you know, even back then when we was rhyming as, as kids, he knew the entire Spiegel catalog, like wow. from cover to cover. He knew every page, every brand, every uh, season, and he would put the brands in the seasons and all of the different colors and all this stuff into his music and he still does it to this day he still knows about brands that people never heard of or that are on the cutting edge and you know that's just he's always been that type of guy always and, and i don't think it'll ever stop 